Well, since yesterday's episode of the Leipzig Loco, for the first time since coming up to the Bundesliga, we have picked up back-to-back -back wins. We are looking very much like a good, solid, mid-level team here in the top tier of German football. Hopefully that continues in two of our last four games before we head in to the winter break. Welcome to episode 65 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does If you might you are doing well and coming up today, we take on our former senior affiliate in Eintracht Frankfurt and then we take on Hoffenheim, currently those guys up in third in a Champions League spot and hopefully can keep ourselves smack bang in the middle of that Bundesliga table or maybe even sneak our way a bit closer to a European spot. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated but in yesterday's episode it was a big one. We took on RB Leipzig in the second round of the DFB Pockel before an away trip in the Bundesliga against Bayern Munich. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Thankfully, pulled off a somewhat upset in the cup over RB Leipzig, albeit we were helped there by an early red card to them. That game a lot closer than it should have been, but then a 2-0 loss away at Bayern Munich. Thankfully off the back of that, we took on some teams who were in the relegation zone, and because of that, for the first time this season, we did pick up back-to-back -back wins in the Bundesliga. First off, we took on Hamburg at home. This game, it actually took us Quite a while to get going, did look like this one might end up in a draw before heading in to a international break. But thankfully Thibaut Cliget off of the bench did score a goal with 20 minutes left. And only a few minutes later, it was Tom Gale from a corner. So in the end, we pick up a 2-0 win, albeit not quite as comfortable as you might imagine with the way that Hamburg have been going so far this season. And then away from home, we took on Bochum, of course, the team that came up for a promotion playoff last season, finishing third in the two Bundesliga, which we won this game. A lot more comprehensive, three first half goals, nothing much happened in the second half. That actually quite a good result, considering we were missing our striker in Amadori and also gave Escobar a rest off the back. Of the international breaks, that was quite a good result there against the team, who I believe still are on bottom of the table. But then we hosted RB Leipzig again this time, not with the help of an early red card, and suffered a 3-1 defeat, albeit most of the goals in this game were quite weird. The first chance for RB Leipzig just before halftime did come for a penalty, so can't complain too much about that one. But just after halftime, we did grab an equaliser. Really nice goal this Quecto came off the post. It was some good build-up play. Thankfully, the rebound somehow fell to Salue, and we grabbed an equaliser. But off the back of that, RB Leipzig here with 15 minutes left, still at one all. Did feel like for a minute here, we dealt with the danger, but then Campanelli just crosses that one nicely for an RB Leipzig player in Fratesi. He puts that one away, then a set piece, and that goal to be fair was the most comprehensive one in the game. And RB Leipzig pick up a 3-1 win, which I believe keeps Ange Postacoglu in a job for now. He might not last until the end of this episode. We'll keep an eye out on that, but he was certainly under pressure going into that second derby that we did play against them, but unfortunately we did not pick up a win, but still in a very good position off the back of those wins against those teams who are down in the relegation zone. It's fair to say those teams are toilets. If toilets had toilets for their cats, they're just really, really bad teams. So hopefully they're the three which will end up going down. They don't take any points off us in the second half of the season, which is almost guaranteed now. That I have said that, but we're 11 points clear of the relegation zone in Hamburg, have already played on this match day as well. So you'd like to think that gap won't be closing in the first game of today's episode. But to be fair, we have got some tricky games coming up in this one. And thankfully, a few players have recovered from injuries which have plagued us over the course of the last few episodes. Nicolo Amadori has just come back from some pulled knee ligaments, which is good, albeit only recommended for 75 minutes. But unfortunately, Bushuari did pick up a little knock in that most recent game that lost to RB Leipzig. He'll miss the first game in today's episode against Eintracht Frankfurt, but should be back for the one a few days later, where we do take on Hoffenheim. But first up today, we take on our former senior affiliate in Eintracht Frankfurt. This is a team the past couple of seasons who have picked up the DFB Pockel, albeit they come into this game 
in some outright terrible form, even in the Europa League, they're not looking that convincing, and recently in the Bundesliga, suffered a heavy defeat to RB Leipzig, and also a loss to Wolfsburg, so to be fair, their recent form, kind of similar to ours, at least in terms of results, against those teams they've been playing of late, in the Bundesliga, is away from home, but maybe a sneaky chance for us here, to pick up some points, probably more chance in this game than in the second one against third place Hoffenheim. But hopefully we can get the job done in this first game of today's episode. There you can see Hoffenheim were held to a draw by RB Leipzig, albeit to be fair, RB Leipzig certainly in some much better form now than they were when we played them in that cup game in yesterday's episode. But time for us to get stuck in to this first game of today's episode. Interesting to see there, they've got Alex Scott is that the British Alex Scott? Indeed it is. That already gives me some nervy times, albeit looks like he's playing as a fullback, which is a bit interesting there. A complete wingback for Eintracht Frankfurt. So interesting stuff there from our former senior affiliate. In terms of us, obviously with that injury at left wing, Osman Tilgan will come in for Bushawari, and it does mean Baker Boaty makes his way onto the bench. Apart from that, Benedetti comes in for Escobar, a bit tired off the back of a game only a couple of days ago, but apart from that, we are at full strength for this first game of today's episode, and hopefully we can put out a decent performance against a team who are struggling in terms of form, so hopefully we can make the most of that as we just sort out here some squad numbers for Baker Barty in particular. A couple of players are a little short on match fitness. Racine Bullock has been suspended in a couple of recent games since he returned from his injuries. He hasn't quite got back up to speed as much as we were hoping for, but hopefully, even though this one is away from home, we can pick up a decent result in this one. We'll just make sure we can give the guys the talk that we've been recommended by our assistant manager. We'll get through the pre-match stuff and get stuck in to our first game of today's episode. Osman Tilgan in good form of late. Hopefully that continues. Here are the team sheets. There's Eintracht Frankfurt. Five at the back. Alex Scott has a complete wing back outright, as I said before. That is very interesting in terms of us. As I said, just that change out left. And also Benedetti comes in for Escobar, who is on the bench. Hopefully will be fit for that Hoffenheim game. But hopefully we can just make our way up the table a little bit more against the team currently just behind us here in our former senior affiliates. We'll get the action underway away from home. And it is an early highlight here. We're in position on the attack too. But unfortunately, Tuta gets that ball there for Eintracht Frankfurt. Now, Ilias. Starts to make some headway, and there is Alex Scott. Have I made the fatal sin of highlighting a good player from the other team? Potentially lovely ball that, but thankfully that header comes off the post, and we are still locked up at nil all early, albeit now a highlight immediately. Off the back of that, hopefully we don't bottle things here inside the last couple of minutes with a defensive mistake, or should I say the first couple of minutes. Gale spreads that one out to Alessandro Dorenzo. Plays it for poor pass though, looking for Amadori. Ball over the top, thankfully Campanelli should be there to tidy this one up. Now Billy Camillo plays that one for Racine Bullock. Benedetti on the ball and plays quite a nice pass up there to Amadori, but that's a poor option. I think he should have gone looking out right there instead of left. So unfortunately, it is again Eintracht Frankfurt in position. What has been a pretty helter-skelter opening highlight. Elias gets in behind, but thankfully that shot is from a very tight angle. A long highlight. That didn't amount to much, but if there's say so far the home team are looking a bit more dangerous. But now it's a throw in here in our favor. Bullock plays that one for this time. We link up with Amadori that time, though. Queto with an elephant's touch, and it is Eintracht Frankfurt who are on the ball yet again. So far, they have been controlling position pretty well. We try and put pressure on them there down that right hand side. Can't quite do it. They will try and play out from the back. Unfortunately, Amadori can't quite close them down on that left hand side. Of their defense now, Alex Scott yet again inside the box. It's now a long range effort, not a high percentage chance. And thankfully, that one goes over the bar. But it's fair to say, early stages of this game, lots of highlights, and all of them have been in favor of the home team in the white and black. And yet again, a throw in here, which might end up in them making their way down the wrong end of the field. Thankfully, that time, Tom Gale with a good hitter. And now Luca Campanelli might get a chance here to get us. On the attack, plays that one back to Cometeo Benedetti, who to be fair, has been improving with him getting some regular game time with Escobar, often being a little bit tired. That ball over the top, unfortunately, one of our players there was offside. The goalkeeper can claim it. And yet again, Eintracht Frankfurt 
quickly make their way into our half and Alex Scott's finding a ton of space down that right hand side. We eventually close him down, but might be a case here of too little too late. Jakic plays that one over the top. Lindstrom with a header. Thankfully, all these chances haven't been too high percentage. Still no all coming up to the 15 minute mark. Just passed it now. But so far, we've done absolutely nothing in this game, albeit now we get a shot off, but nothing that was worth seeing in a highlight. And shortly off the back of that here is a free kick in favour of Eintracht Frankfurt. Hopefully, we keep their chances to being quite low percentage ones. And Dorenzo will hopefully tidy that one up down the far side. He finds Tom Gale, plays it in there for Cometio. Gale, a bit lazy on the ball as he can be. It comes off the post. That one definitely the best chance so far in this game. Yet again, we nearly play for some sloppiness. At the back, but thankfully still nil all. But it really feels like this is a game we should be behind. And so hopefully we get our act into gear soon. We did demand more with that last shout. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like it's changed too much so far. We'll go back to an encourage a few minutes shy of half time. And hopefully can get in the sheds still at nil all. And give these guys a bit of a rev up. And thankfully that is the case. Because that was a pretty awful first half. No all, but to be fair, the way this game is going, I think I'd take a draw because we have well and truly been on the back foot throughout all of it. Just one measly shot, and it was from a long way away from goal as well. Position-wise, not losing the battle by that much, but just not creating enough in the first half. I think we're going to make quite a few changes here at halftime. With three players down two 6.4 ratings, with Dorenzo at left back, so we're going to bring on Yuri Bass in his place, and also our left winger and striker, not doing too well. Cliche can come on for Amadori, still making his way back from injury. And we'll try Tyler Dibbling out left instead of Baker Boaty, just because he's a much better player. And hopefully those changes get us on the front foot a lot more in this second half. Also tell the guys really need to be a lot more positive in this second half. And hopefully that gets them up for it. Because as I said before, that first half, we pretty much did absolutely nothing. So hopefully we can do a bit more in the second, which we'll get underway, still somehow locked up at nil all. But already looking at the XG match story, it does look like Eintracht Frankfurt are still on the front foot and getting shots off. I think they got one more on target there since the restart, albeit no more shots on their tally on that top stat line. So not too sure what happened there. But thankfully, we have the ball from the first highlight in this second half, Racine Bullock plays that one forward to Krasnicki. And Daniel Cueto will get in behind and he'll put it away. And we are robbing Eintracht Frankfurt here away from home. We're up 1-0 and maybe starting to see why they might be struggling. It's just reeks of a team low on confidence even though they are playing a lot better than us. We've had one chance and are making the most of it. Daniel Cueto, nice finish there into that bottom right corner. And hopefully we can somehow keep a clean sheet throughout the rest of this game as we make our way up to the hour mark. Might be time for me here to check on some player fitness. Just noticing we've got a few players already down to red hearts. We do have three games inside this week. This is the second of them. I was going to take off Campanelli, but I think we might use those remaining subs to take off the red hearted players. So unfortunately, I think that means Baker Boaty will be coming off of the bench. We'll put Dibbling out right eye fork, but we might actually leave Baker Boaty on that side seeing as his finishing not quite as good as Dibbling, but as well as that will bring on Chyler in place of Racine Bullock, another player just struggling a little bit, coming back from an injury, but thankfully we're up by one goal to nil with a half hour left, a very surprising scoreline off the back of that first half, but thankfully we've had one big chance and have taken it, but hopefully these guys can last the rest of this game now that we have used all of our subs, as I said before, third game inside a week. This is the situation that will be coming up, especially in that second one today, where we do take on Hoffenheim. Now Dibbling gets in behind nicely there. What can he do? Cuts inside. He takes a good shot, but unfortunately, that one comes off the post. Certainly feels like we're starting to get on the front foot a bit more here in the second half, but still only up by a goal. A cushion one would be very nice. Now Daniel Cueto will take this corner, not usually the player who takes our set pieces, but with no Bushawari, as well as having taken a Tilgan off, he will. Tom Gale there, right inside the box, but unfortunately that header just goes over the bar, still up 
by one goal to nil as we make our way towards the last 10 minutes of this one somehow with a 1-0 lead, which hopefully we can keep a hold of now that we are deep into this game. As I said before, we have gone the front foot a lot more as you briefly saw there through those stats. It's now down the other end, Gruder, with a chance, and I think that's a foul. That would be such a frustrating way to let Eintracht Frankfurt get something out of this game. Hopefully, he took a dive, but I don't think it's the case. In fact, the way that this is looking, I think this might get awarded as a penalty, albeit he has gone over to his little screen. And it is a penalty. Who gave that one away? It was Tom Gale. I don't know about Tom Gale, honestly. If we can improve on him in the upcoming transfer window, we might especially, because our scouting has improved greatly over this past season. And that we can do it worldwide. But Brian Gluda scores his first goal of the season. It's from the penalty spot. But how typical, and now we might be struggling to hold on to a point in this game, which would actually be fair the way it's been going. Hopefully we don't blow things late though off the back of taking that lead reasonably early in the second half. And it is a late free kick here to Eintracht Frankfurt. It comes off the post there, a far post header. Hopefully that's the last highlight that we see down that end. But Eintracht Frankfurt off the back of that goal, getting right on the front foot yet again. And there's a very late highlight with only 20 seconds left. Please don't let them score. Cliche, good work. Plays that one out to Baker Boaty. Can he slot someone through? And can we escape with three points from this game? Cliche puts it away. He's onside and what a goal that is. We are going to rob our former senior affiliate of some points in this one. Almost looks like he was doing the Megan Rapinoe cup of tea over there in the corner. Not too sure why you'd do that against Eintracht Frankfurt. But Baker Boaty outright has actually done a pretty good job and gets an assist and puts through Cliche off of the bench. He will grab a goal, which will give us a massive three points. And that should get us closer to the European spots than it will to that relegation zone. And that is a proper FMing there in our first game of today's episode. Well and truly on the back foot, especially in that first half to beat the second half, I think was a lot more even. But thankfully, we take our chances a lot more than Eintracht Frankfurt did, as I said earlier. Maybe that's a sign of a team out of form. And we somehow escaped there with a 2-1 win in the first game of today's episode. We'll tell the guys didn't play as well as we can, but I am very happy with that result, especially off the back of that first half somehow. Kept it at nil all, and thankfully the penalty which Tom Gale gave away wasn't too costly. We will say we did well to the media post-match, and also it does say we are in a continental qualification spot. Doesn't actually look like we are, so that might be a little bit false, but it does give us a platform to build on for the rest of the season at least. Gets us a bit further away from the relegation zone now. 14 points clear of that, and we are not quite yet at the halfway mark of the season. Also, we jump back above RB Leipzig, which is always nice, but a good win there in our first game of today's episode, at least in terms of the result, not so much the performance. A 2-1 win over our former senior affiliate in Eintracht Frankfurt. And we are back before the second game of today's episode, about to take on a Hoffenheim team who do find themselves up in third place these days. They are managed by Marco Rosen, the complete opposite of what we just took on in Eintracht Frankfurt. These guys in very good form, draws recently against RB Leipzig and Bayern, but wins over Hamburg, Bochum, and FC Twente in the Europa Conference League. So these guys certainly come to this one in a lot more confidence than our previous opposition did. And thankfully, we're not too bad off in terms of player fitness and injuries as well going into the second game of today's episode. Thankfully, was able to manage the team quite well off the back of that short break. So this is the team we are going with a few changes just due to player fitness, but really, it's our first choice 11, apart from the fact Yuri Bass comes in for Dorenzo at left back. Everyone else on a heavy match load isn't too injury prone, according to that condition report like that. So hopefully, we don't pick up any injuries from this game. Also, Escobar comes back in, as does Bushuari, so it is quite a strong team. For this clash against the team currently on third on the Bundesliga table, and of course, if we pick up a win in this game, we potentially could sneak our way proper into a European qualifying spot, and that might put us in an interesting position going into the winter break with games coming up against Fortuna Dusseldorf and Cologne, two teams who are below us 
on that Bundesliga table. So on the form we've shown over the past month, three wins from our last four, you would imagine we might go into those games as favourites, especially as I think both of them might be at home as well off the back of these two we are playing away in today's episode. Hopefully we can carry the confidence from that previous game against Eintracht Frankfurt and keep scoring goals. And here is the formation of Hoffenheim. They are going like us with a 4-2-3-1. Hopefully we can still find a way to break it down. There's our team as we went through before. And hopefully we can back up that surprise win over Eintracht Frankfurt, especially considering how that game went with another good performance here away from home as we do take on Hoffenheim, albeit definitely expecting this one to be tougher, this team in much better form and a lot higher up the table. But it looks like early doors, we are showing a bit more in terms of what we've seen in the game. We'll just make sure here that Escobar does ease off tackles. He's picked up a early yellow, might be getting a bit of a rest in the second half, especially as he is a player who does get tired quite easily, does our young Wonderkin, but so far this game hasn't been up to too much, albeit as I say that, free kick here in our favour, Escobar, looking for someone at that far post on this near side, but unfortunately can't quite link up a bit too much on it, and it is here Nubul who does have the ball for Hoffenheim, pumps it deep, Gal wins it, Escobar thankfully will play that one to Campanelli, and we keep the ball for now. We play it back to Ivizic. Hopefully nothing silly comes from this. We pick out Tom Gal and now Escobar. Nice switch out there to Campanelli down that right-hand side. Can play through Krasnicki and making his way through Daniel Cueto. But for some reason he stops and takes on the shot. Probably could have taken that one closer to goal. Still locked up at nil all coming up to the half hour mark. But so far not doing too badly at all. And now here a free kick in our favor Escobar is quite good at these. We'll see if we can live up to that, but unfortunately Nubal comes up there with a pretty good save. Hopefully, despite the fact I've encouraged, we'll still see the following corner, which Bushuari will put into the mixer, but unfortunately no one gets their head on the end of that one. Still nil all, about 10 minutes shy of half time and now a thrown. So most highlights so far have been in our favour. Escobar does well there to keep that ball Plays it back to Bullock and gets it back. Now he tries to find Queto. Thankfully, we still keep it. Bushawari with a long range effort, but that one goes just wide. But it has been a much better first half than what we saw in that previous game against Eintracht Frankfurt. And stats wise, we are the better team. Hopefully, we don't concede just before the half because that could be something that happens. A bit of payback for that previous game. But we're on the attack again here. Krasnicki down our right hand side plays that one in to Bullock Escobar. On the ball again, having a big impact in this game. Yuri Bass now in lots of space. Picks out Amadori, the big tall Italian. We'll head that one home. And thankfully, we get some reward for our dominance. Yuri Bass with an assist. And that puts us 1-0 up. A few minutes shy of halftime. And based on the highlights, which have entirely been in our favour, that does feel like a fair scoreline. Amadori, he is a big lad and certainly a lot better than our other options in terms of a striker with his head inside the box. So thankfully, we take a 1-0 lead. Only a few minutes shy of half time. Hopefully, that will be that. For the first half, it is. And that was a very good performance. 1-0 up against the team currently in third on the Bundesliga table. And also quite happy with how we're playing. I know Escobar is on a yellow heart, but he's actually been at the heart of a lot of the good stuff we've been doing in this game. Seeing as no one is down to a red heart, I think we'll leave things as they are. Going into the second half with a 1-0 lead, we'll tell the guys they're doing well, capable of better, but not too sure if that's the truth. Honestly, that was a pretty good half of football there. Hopefully, we might be able to find a cushion goal at some stage. Amadouli back in goal-scoring touch, back from his injury. Hopefully, Escobar can last a little while of the second half. As I said before, he's been very influential in that first one, but early stages, there is a highlight here potentially in favour of our opposition in Hoffenheim. Thankfully, there was a shot there. It did get blocked. Now, Bass under pressure plays that one back to Tom Gal Cometio, finds Bullock. We eventually find Campanelli in space. And thankfully, that pass did find its way to Krasnicki. Looked there like for a minute, it might get pinched by a Hoffenheim player. Now, Escobar over the top, that one. A little bit too deep for Amadori, but poor touch there. And it somehow goes through the hands of Nubel. I say goes through the hands. It comes off them. And Escobar gets an assist. Thankfully, we left him on for the second half. I actually don't know if he would have got the assist because, of course, big helping hand there from the defender who lets go of the ball here. Does come while it's a poor touch. Amadori with a speculative effort, but Nubal palms that one 
into the bottom right corner. Signs of match fixing, honestly, but it is 2-0 early in the second half, and hopefully we can now hold on with that cushion goal and pick up two big results during the course of today's episode. Bullock now has picked up a yellow card. Might be time for us to change that midfield, even though they are going quite well. So we'll bring on Miguel Chira in place of Bullock and also Benedetti in place of Escobar. Certainly those two very able backups. And hopefully hold on and pick up all three points here with just over a half hour left off the back of that Amadori double either side of halftime, albeit shortly off the back of those subs. It is here Hoffenheim on the ball, but thankfully we win that one back there. That was through Miguel Chiwa, so some good impact off the bench immediately. Amadori having a very good game. Krasnicki plays it for Vaqueto. Thought it might be a hat-trick chance for Amadori. He chips the goalkeeper, and we are flying here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, picking our form up just prior to the winter break. And surely now that's going to make it four wins from our last five games, and maybe we can start to just think a little bit about European football for next season, albeit not too sure how long we'll be able to think about that, because no doubt we'll come crashing to a halt at some stage up in the Bundesliga. I don't think we'll go on a run like we did in the two Bundesliga last season, but 3-0 against the team in third on the table is a superb result. Krasnicki puts this one into the mixer, probably looking for Amadori, doesn't find him, but good work there from Benedetti to win that ball back for us. We still somehow keep it and might get a chance here to make it 4-0. Bass plays that one back to Gal. Now Benedetti finds Bass again. He's also been very good in this one. Links up with Bushuari. Far post there. Can't quite link up with Krasnicki. But Miguel Chaiwa is back a bit further to tidy up the scraps. Now Campanelli is on the ball. It might make its way into Amadori. He will grab a hat-trick. It's a scrappy goal. But it's 4-0. And we are thumping Hoffenheim. And this, I did not see coming, honestly, Hoffenheim in superb form prior to this game. And we were pretty fortunate to pick up that prior win over Eintracht Frankfurt. But Campanelli, Amadori there, gets lots of help from the foot of the defender, but heads it home to complete his hat-trick and make it 4-0 with 25 minutes left. And this might be a good time to make another couple of substitutions, a few players down to Red Hearts and also Campanelli is just a player who came to this one quite injury prone. We'll bring on Florian Huxa in his place and also take off Daniel Cueto for Salah Ula Imhand, who did come to me before the game looking for more game time. Thankfully, he backed out when I said, well, we can sell ya. So that worked nicely for me, but we'll make those two subs in a position now, surely, where we can't lose this one at 4-0 up. But maybe we can even extend our lead here inside these last 25 minutes, but certainly our goal scoring touches come back in this game in particular, very good performance in the first half, and thankfully, we've kicked on in the second as well. About to make our way inside the last 15 minutes time for us now to make our last substitution. And of the players we can take off, we might play things safe and take off Bushuari. He can get quite injury prone in his place. We will bring on Osman Atilgen, of course, seeing as he was starting that previous game, where we did also pick up a win. So he can get some game time in these last 15 minutes with that 4-0 lead. Still absolutely stunned that the scoreline is that much in our favour. Our XG, it is only just under one. Hoffenheim, their XG, not that much below ours, but thankfully, we've been a lot more efficient in front of goal thanks to our striker in Amadori. Hoffenheim here might get a chance to pull one back, albeit I think Bill Helson there would have been offside. We get the ball back there through Chaiwa. It's Hilgen off the bench with some early impact finds. Krasnicki, lovely ball through there to Ula Imhan. Gets a chance to open his account for the club. I'm pretty sure that's his first competitive goal. It is indeed. He makes it 5-0. And Hoffenheim don't know what have hit them here in this home game. Massive result for us. And it will get us right in the European hunt. Ula Imhan. Nice finish there off that ball. I believe it was from Krasnicki. 5-0 inside the last 10 minutes. Hoffenheim are going to be under an absolute lock and key in the changing rooms. After this one, they'll be getting an absolute barreling. That will be all she wrote. And somehow we pick up a 5-0 win to be fair. I think all the highlights in that game were in our favour. Pretty much everyone who finished the game was on a green rating. And even then, some of our bench players like Escobar somehow wasn't on a green rating, but certainly had a big influence on the opening 50 or so minutes of that game. Our best performance, I'd say, so far 
of the season, a 5-0 win over Hoffenheim, and that should get us in the European hunt, coming in to the winter break, especially if we can continue the form that we have been showing in our last couple of games. As I said now, that makes it four wins from our last five, just somehow lost to RB Leipzig of all teams, considering they're not doing that well this season, albeit of late their form has been quite similar to Hoffenheim's, but that is a massive result. Hopefully we can carry this form on a bit longer and pick up two more wins before the winter break. Unfortunately, other results mean we don't quite find a way to sneak inside of that top six for a European spot, but thankfully we do stay ahead of RB Leipzig in seventh spot now off the back of a huge 5-0 win at Hoffenheim. So a couple of very good results in those two games in today's episode, especially that second one, that first game, we didn't play that well, that second one, even though the stats are quite even, we did play a lot better, especially in what we saw from those match highlights, a 5-0 win over Hoffenheim, including a hat-trick from Nicolo Amadori back from his injury, he will get a ton of praise from me for that performance, as I said during the game, you can tell he's a bit taller than our other striking options, certainly has a good header on him, and that means we move up to 7th on the Bundesliga table. That won't change no matter what happens in the remainder of the games on this match day. And we are now 17 points clear of the teams down in the relegation zone. The teams who are cat toilet. But that is a very good episode. And hopefully we're now building up a big enough gap that we don't need to worry about making our way back down to the two Bundesliga. And maybe if we can somehow find a way to continue this good form for a little bit longer, we might be able to make Europe in our first season up in the Bundesliga. But that will do it for today's episode, the last one this week of the Leipzig Loco, also the last one before we do hit the winter break. Two very good wins, especially that 5 0 win over Hoffenheim. If you enjoyed that episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so or really are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back right off the back of the winter break. We're going to take on Fortuna Dusseldorf and Cologne off camera. As I said before, on our form over the past month or so, you'd almost expect us to pick up wins in both of those games, albeit we could potentially slip up off the back of a 5-0 knowing how FN can be. But we'll come back at the start of January, we'll take on Dortmund for the second time this season, this time in front of the yellow wall. Those guys now up in third after that hammering that we dished out to Hoffenheim. And off the back of that, we'll take part in the third round of the DFB Pop. We'll take on a Gladbach team at home who we picked up a nil draw against away early this season. Hopefully, we find a way through to the quarterfinals yet again and also a transfer update if any business does take place. We'll come back for that come the start of next week off the back of the winter break. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.